on this episode of the Red and Gold Report, we're talking winners and losers coming out of the Chiefs' thrilling last-minute victory over the Los Angeles Chargers on Sunday Night Football. And to me, the big winner of this game was the fact that the Chiefs have found a running game. We have found a running back. Yes, rookie seventh-round draft pick Isaiah Pacheco was a huge winner in this game. Pacheco's game on Sunday night was the very first time this season that a Chiefs rusher has gone over 100 yards in a game. Yeah, and we're well into the season, aren't we? It's the first time. He had 107 yards on the ground for an incredible 7.1-yard average. Interesting fact, too. Isaiah only played... 40% of the offensive snaps. So he's picking up a ton of yards. He's changing the whole dynamic of the game, but he's also getting breathers. And I think that is smart for the coaches to be doing. He just, he runs with a speed and a determination and an anger that we have not seen out of a Chiefs running back in a long, long time. And not only is it obvious that he is the Chiefs number one running back, he might be good enough to give us that jolt that carries us to the number one seed in the AFC playoffs. Obviously, another winner of the game was Travis Kelsey. I mean, what else more can you say? He had uh, the touchdown catch with 40 seconds left to win the game after he'd already had the 34-yard catch in the fourth quarter that turned the thing around. I mean, he ended the night with 115 yards, three touchdowns, even though he was being covered by one of the best safeties in the entire NFL in Derwin James. James. Travis Kelsey is incredible every week. Enough said. Patrick Mahomes obviously had a good game too. And to me, it's not about the numbers. No, this time it's about this. No matter what happens, Mahomes just finds a way. Really, going into the game with wide receivers Juju Smith Schuster and McCole Hardman already out with injury. And then soon into the game, Kadarius Tony, another wide receiver, goes out with an injury. And Patrick just plain still found a way to win, as if it almost doesn't matter who's catching balls out there. Wide receiver Justin Watson had a pretty quietly good game as well. He led our wide receivers with 67 yards catching. He brought in three out of four of the balls thrown his way. He played 88% of the offensive snaps. So it's good to know that we have somebody like that if these injuries persist at the wide receiver spot. Also, Creed Humphrey had a good day, only allowing one pressure, excelling in run blocking. He's the best center in the entire NFL. And I also want to mention wide receiver Sky Moore. Yeah, his numbers were good, 63 yards, uh, catching five of six balls thrown his way. But more than that was he stepped up when he was needed and he answered the call. Seriously, he's a really talented dude. As I keep saying, I'm excited about his development at wide receiver. But I would really, I would understand if his very serious struggles on special teams this season would have hurt his confidence and carried over into the offense. But with all the injuries at wide receiver, he was needed. And he answered. He didn't let all those failures at special teams get in his head and prevent him from answering the call when he was needed on offense. So good job to Sky Moore. Over on defense, backup defensive end, Mike Dana was just incredible. Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert. He probably was up all night with nightmares about Mike. Uh, Mike Dana had two sacks, two tackles for loss, two quarterback hits. His power was just too much for struggling Chargers offensive tackles. If you watch him play, at his best, what he is is he, he he's kind of a shorter, stouter defensive end, and he can get under the pads of offensive tackles, and he does have a lot of strength. He's not the fastest defensive end, but he's got a lot of strength, and he can jolt them and get past there's something interesting there, and it'll be interesting to see if he can keep it up against more talented offense tackles in the weeks ahead. Defensive tackle Chris Jones looked like, well, Chris, Chris Jones. He's the league's best interior defense alignment, and I don't care who disagrees. He had uh, three tackles for loss, four quarterback hits, two sacks. He also had things like uh, he had that pressure on the second play of the final drive for the Chargers that forced the interception at the end of the game, but there's nothing in the stat line for that, right? A lot of what he does, you don't even see in the numbers. He is now tied, speaking of numbers, for the fifth most sacks in the entire NFL, and he has the most sacks of any interior defense alignment in the league. Linebacker Nick Bolton was his usually amazing self. He led the team with 14 tackles and, of course, caught a deflected interception at the end of the game. Linebacker Willie Gay also had himself a nice day with 
two nice tackles for loss, 11 tackles, and even a sack. The guy, he's like, he is seriously one of the, the fastest, most athletically gifted linebackers in the league. And in the games where he pairs that with actually knowing like where he's going, he is excellent. It's just about pairing that mental aspect with his unprecedented physical aspect of the game. And hey, before we get to the losers uh, uh, of the game, make sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video to get all the best Chiefs insights. So, okay. So who were the losers of the game? Well, the first loser of the game was Mikkel Hardman's TV. Yeah, the injured wide receiver was watching the game from home, and apparently he threw something at his TV and destroyed the thing and didn't get to watch the end of the game. Also, any running back not named Isaiah Pacheco didn't have a great night. Jarek McKinnon had some fine plays, but then he fumbled in the fourth quarter right as the offense was driving down to take a commanding lead. And Well, without Mahomes and Kelsey Magic, that error, that fumble, could have cost us the entire game, so that was not good. Also, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, he was only used on 8% of the offensive snaps. And it's clear that he was used as the third stringer after starting the season as the first stringer. Now, that's probably disappointing to him, but it's good news for Chiefs Kingdom because Pacheco is just playing better and the better player is now starting. Also, a loser on the day was wide receiver Marquez Valdez-Scantling. This was weird. Okay, so MVS is a starter, right? And he's supposed to probably be like the number two two wide receiver. But then Smith Schuster, Hardman, they're out before they even enter the game. Tony goes out early in the game. So that leaves only NVS out of the top four wide receivers. Three of our top four wide receivers are hurt. And so you'd think, okay, this is Marquez Valdez Scantling's time to shine. He's gonna step up, right? He just disappeared. Like he only had one single catch even though he was targeted four times. So not a good night for him. So those are the winners and the losers of the game, but here's the thing that matters. The AFC still goes through Arrowhead. For all of the talk in the offseason about the Chiefs falling behind in the AFC West, for all of the additions that were made to our rivals, like the Raiders and the Chargers and the Broncos, none of it matters. <laughs> we can still go into Chargers territory and come away with a win. We're still three games up on the Chargers, five games up on the Raiders and Broncos, and we still might clinch the division way before the season ends. The AFC West goes through KC. Well, that about does it for me, but what do you think? Who were some of the interesting players during this game? What are your thoughts on all that offseason talk that was so negative? And what do you think about the upcoming game against the Rams? Man, they're talented, but not having a good season. Leave me your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and go Chiefs!